Hey, this is Joe Stedman, the Dice Tower. Today we're going to talk about The Silver River. It's a 4X game um, by Robert Burke and Nathan Bevins. I don't know. I got it in a mail from Tom. He sent it to me. He said review it. My son Danny and Joe and I just got done playing a few times. We uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. It's a 4X game, so what are the 4Xs, guys? Explore. Exterminate. Exter exterminate. Um, Expand. Ex ex exploit. Expand. <laughs> I don't know. Um, if you've played any of the old uh, video games like the uh, Masters of Orion, this is basically Masters of Orion on a tabletop. This is the basic game with the uh, expansion. So it came in a box. I'm thinking that they gave us both for review. So like Masters of Orion, there's a whole bunch of species that you can play. Um, we, how long did it take? About two hours? An hour and a half? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty close. About two hours to play, and that's with learning the rules. The rules come in this this giant rule book, but it's actually not a bad. I, I read some other people think this is a bad rule book, but I thought it was actually pretty easy to, yeah. to read through. There's a few rules questions that we have to look up, I think, just to make sure we did things right. So there's 10 different races. With or the yeah, we had the expansion. So there's 10 species that you can play. We did it random. There are little player cards that give you all the options. The setup in this game takes a while because there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, but once, the, once we got it set up and once we started, it's actually a pretty easy to play game. The downtime is light because we're all simultaneously doing things. Uh, th there's only four, fa there's, there's four turns, four turns, right? There's right, what do we call it, guys, four turns? Mm -hmm. Four ages, there's four ages. And during each age, there's four steps. And we keep taking turns doing our steps until everybody passes. And there's a cool catch-up mechanism I'll talk about in a zoom-in. Um, so there's ten races. We got the, the miniatures. These miniatures are kind of ugly and weird. This, <laughs> uh, I don't even know how to explain them. This is an asteroid. Uh, I don't, they're not very... I don't know. They're not very threatening looking to me, but whatever. <laughs> it reminds me a lot of Masters of Orion because they got the same silly kind of monsters. There's leaders. There's three different leaders that we can vote for. There's a political intrigue to it. There's a technology upgrades. So we have these uh, tech boards. Each person has their own tech board. Then you've got a stack of technologies for colonization and uh, for like civilian stuff. And there's one for military stuff. And you have to follow certain rules to upgrade as you go. There's... Um, your regular production card where you're going to get resources and put them on here and I'll explain that in a zoom in and we all use a shield here to block what we're going to do kind of like a euro game and then we reveal there's space stations which are these they're cardboard in the base game but we have the deluxe so we have these little plastic miniatures for space stations and then we have four fleets and in the bottom of each fleet there's four and then you use this board here and you track how big your fleet is um, but before I go into the actual game itself, how it plays, we want to say the coolest thing about this game we found as Star Trek fans is the Explore deck, which makes it unique than any game I've played that are 4X. So you have this Explore deck, and anytime you go into an empty spot, you get to flip over an Explore card. And it gives you options. Op this, one, this particular one has three options, and whatever you choose is going to give different effects. And some of them will cause this other deck of almost like choose your own adventure uh, organized events that will happen that will stay on the board until they're resolved and so that's kind of like if you chose selection one here you have to put side quest f into the explorer deck so someone else might pull that out and something might happen so that's kind of we like this a lot it did feel like star trek when we were playing um there's some wooden pieces here that'll make everybody happy you know these are called wonders the um, what else guys what am i missing there's the scoreboard Scoreboard, you know, it's got its victory point track, which will make everybody happy. Then it's got the different things that you, um, this is very designer Euro game-ish, this score track, and I'll zoom in and show you that. Remind me much of that. The monsters all have a deck of cards, and they have, they, there's five different levels of monster. Every time you defeat a monster, it gets stronger. Uh, a new monster will come out, and they've got abilities, random abilities that are going to go along with it. Uh, what Tactics else? Cards. Yep, tactics cards are in the game, so you're, you're able to um, research and get tactics cards, which are instant plays, or you can use them for your turn. Um, it's got cubes, lots of little cubes to track everything going down here, and your resources up here. And quests, objectives. 
Yep, uh, and that's the, the victory points are going to happen through different things. There's, there's group objectives that everybody can see, and then there's secret objectives that each player will have on their own. And you, we choose the, uh, the randomly get the objectives, the, the personal objectives, and there's two objectives on each one. There's an instant. Once you achieve it, you reveal it, and you get those immediate victory points. And there's an end game one that everyone will know you're trying for. Like, for instance, this one says, get a fleet with 10 ships in it. As soon as one of my fleets gets 10 ships, I get two victory points. But at the end of the game, if I have the most total ships, then I'm going to get four more victory points. Um, and so everyone kind of sees what's going on, and they can try to stop you, which is like, kind of like Ticket to Ride with completing tracks. The, uh, our game when we played, this last one we just played, it seemed pretty close. Like Joe and I was winning, and Danny built up this massive uh, fleet and kept on attacking the... The monsters at the black hole, which we kind of just blew off and didn't worry about, but it just kept him going and going, and he ended up beating us by a, a good amount. So he he pulled that one out. All right, let's zoom in. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about the gameplay, but it's not going to be how to play the game, just a little bit how the game works. Okay, so here's your some of the components. This is how you track your fleets. You got four fleets, the number of ships. You just move the the, the bits. You got three different wonders that you can build. You've got your unique cult, you know, to your species wonder. Then you've got what's called a pleasure dome, I think they call it. This is kind of like, if you know Star Trek, but this is something that you build and no one can, this guy be special. And this is like a orbiting space station that gives you an option to build uh, fleets for cheaper. This is the heart of the game is this board here. This is where you're going to put all your cubes secretly under raw production at the beginning of each turn. And Joe, move them over. And then you're going to designate where you want each of your cubes to go secretly. And then we once everyone's done, we reveal our cubes. Um, this is the board where you track your technology and your levels. And it tells you the cost of different things that you want to do on the game. And as you upgrade them, the cost will change. And then you have to unlock certain uh, slots in your where you can have more technologies and stuff by doing certain things. And then here is your your board. It's going to give you your special ability for your culture. You know, each character has their unique abilities. Then you have these three little star tokens which designate your quest. You're allowed to do three quests per turn. This is how you track them. Um, and we'll see what else. There's your, your bits. I don't have to explain that. There's your battle board. I mean your map. Um, the different cards are fine quality stock. Let me get a zoom in on some of these miniatures because these, these miniatures, you know, you're going to see the space sheep here. Let me see here. <laughs> space! Space sheep. Oh. oh, it's so scary. But this is, and this one looks like something I'd catch on my out on the lake and I'd throw back. And this thing looks like a dog that got microwaved, I guess. I don't really know. But this one, look at this. This looks like my father-in-law. Uh, yeah, this this is disgusting looking. Um, it's silly. Now here's the heart of the game where you kind of track what's going on with your victory points, and then you. This is the catch-up mechanism. It's really neat. So when one player gets, when, when they pass, every subsequent round that, uh, the, including the first round, every time you hit pass, you get to advance one of your markers. There's other ways to advance your markers, like tactics cards and stuff, but this is a, a catch-up mechanism because if one player has all these production and they just keep on taking turn after turn and the other guy just keeps on passing, he can keep on moving his stuff up. And at the end of the game, that's going to give him a bunch of victory points. Oh, the battle? Battle's pretty simple. You get these dice, right? And then your fleet, depending if you have a base fleet like this one, this is what causes hits. As you upgrade your military, it changes what the pips do on the dice, which is really cool. So this gives us plasma cannons. Get the next one, Joe. Plasma cannons. Oh, there we go. There's mass drivers. That's actually below that level. Yeah. Photon missiles. Sounds familiar. Phase torpedoes. And then you roll the dice and figure out what happens. Dice, the combat is simplistic, but that's how it should be. Massive rule book. Turn through a few pages. Just give us some stuff that's going on. You got a cheat sheet in the back. He's got some. Whoa, it's like a magazine. It's that magazine quality paper. It's got your basic setup configurations for the board. Then it's got a little bit of a, an overview of the rules. I thought the rules were fine. The available actions, there's a solo variant, and there's even a way to fight the monster variant. There's some special rules, but that's about it. So overall, um, there's a few things I would change. I think the quality of the components is a little bit lacking. I think these miniatures are not that good. Uh, they're cool and weird, but they're silly looking. Like This looks like 
a flying sheep. I don't know. And this looks like something you'd find on the bottom of the ocean, but maybe that was the intent. This one is the worst one. It looks like a, a frowning guy with a gun coming out of the top of his head. This one's horrible. I would replace this one for sure. This one's actually the best one. Um, those are weird, but like I said, it's kind of got that funny feeling to it. The, um, I didn't like, even with the upgraded ships tokens, uh, your fleet tokens, they could do better molds than this. And maybe with a future expansion or an upgrade, they'll have an actual molded miniature to represent your, your there's only four per player. So, and then you just have to mold in the bottom what number it is, because that's secret unless you get uh, in the same spot as someone else. But those are about the only things I would change. The quality of the components could be upgraded a little bit. And I think that's because, and I don't know, I've been out of the hobby for a long time, but I'd never heard of Robert... Barica, Eureka Games or whatever. So maybe this is an independent producer or a big producer. I don't know. The art's pretty good. I like the art. Um, things I, that, that my biggest likes of the game was we could all do our own style and we didn't necessarily have to interact, but we could interact. We could be aggressive or we could focus on trade or technology. It's, def, it's definitely where everyone, almost like a coin game where there's different routes to victory so every player can do their own thing and not worry about the other players unless they get too close to me. Like a Danny, Danny kind of come up this way and I was over here and I started getting nervous, but then he went for the monsters and didn't, he could have even been more aggressive at some point. He kept on advancing his fleet and the rest of uh, me and Joe didn't and he could have walked all over us, but he won. So why am I second guessing what he did? Um, what about you, Danny? What, what are your thoughts? I, I like the game. Not much I would do different at all because I don't know how. Danny wouldn't change anything. He liked it. What? Danny's 16 years old. He's a typical 16-year-old guy. He just wants to have fun. And did it, did it feel like a computer game to you that was on a board? A bit, yeah. It did feel like that to me, uh, which is cool because there's interaction, and you can set it up at your house and actually talk to people while you're playing, and it's not just staring at a computer screen. What about you, Joe? Did you, did you like it? I liked it a lot. Um, I didn't like these miniatures at all, these spaceships on dinner plates. <laughs> <laughs> and um, a lot of the objectives... At near the end of the game, if you don't, if you, if it's not possible for you to get them anymore, they're basically worthless. You just have to go for the monster in the middle. Yeah. Which is, yeah. It's a huge part. It's a huge part of the game. Um, well, it, I think you're right. I think if if you can't get all your objectives, there are, there's other ways to get victory points. So this this track here, you can get a lot of victory points from this. There's from winning each of the four categories, plus your lowest score, kind of like Tigers and Euphrates. Your your lowest scoring cube is going to going to get that many victory points. You can try to win each win each one, and then, the, I already said this, the leaders, and if nothing else, the monster. And you gotta, you, can't, you gotta pay attention to what the other players are doing because Danny ran away with our game because me and Joe just let him mess with the monster and it just kept on paying benefits for Danny. Um, so I, I, I'm not sure if I saw this at the board game store if I'd actually buy this game or not, but I'm glad that I was given a review copy to play because I like it. It's, it's not heavy. Uh, me and Danny 16, Joe's 19, and we sat down and just read through the rules and played it, and we didn't miss that many rules the first time through. I mean, we were obviously, we, we played differently the next time, and every time we play, we're going to get better, we're going to refine, but we got all the rules. Didn't have any problems there. The artwork is very Twilight Imperium style, so I thought, well, I've already got Twilight Imperium, do I really need this? But that doesn't feel like Twilight Imperium. Twilight Imperium is more about little ships attacking each other. This is more like a 4X game where I'm I'm doing my technology, I'm also doing my civilization, and there's a military aspect, and there's the cool part, the explore deck, which gives us those random events and the kind of fun stuff to laugh at. Uh, and we've got the, we've got, we can play five players, so I can't imagine five player game of this, how silly that would be. So I can't wait to get this set up with uh, two more players, and we're going to play five players. So I give it two thumbs up, I like it a lot. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and, Mom always calls when I'm doing reviews. Hello? Cut this out. I'm right in the middle of a video game review with, I mean, a board game review. Can I call you back? You do this all the time. Don't answer your phone. Well, it's super loud. I'll call you back in a few minutes.